Model engineering for beginners. In this episode I show how to make a cast iron piston for a steam engine. It is a simple job if you do it the correct way. I'm making this piston for a small grasshopper beam engine because the original piston was unserviceable. The first thing that you require is a good piece of close grain cast iron. I buy most of my model engineering materials from a local supplier, Blackgates Engineering. The website address is on the screen at the moment. Blackgates do worldwide mail order. So the piece of close grain cast iron is now in the chuck and what I'm doing is taking a cut as you can see here. What I need to do is make sure that the piece of cast iron is held securely in the chuck and it's not going to be very secure held by the uneven outer surface. So the first thing I'm doing is to take a selection of cuts to narrow the diameter slightly then I'm going to turn it round so that the chuck holds it by the clean piece of metal. This way you stand more chance of getting a more accurate piston. Cast iron of this quality is very easy to machine. Here I'm using a carbide tip tool and a Boxford lathe. This is a small lathe but it's very rigid and very accurate. If you're using a smaller lathe than this you may have to go into back gear. If you get any chatter at all you're running too fast. If you're using a high speed steel tool make sure that the first cut gets under the skin of the cast iron because the skin contains sand and shale that will easily blunt the tool so you need to get that out of the way fairly quickly. In this first sequence of operations I'm removing approximately a quarter of an inch from the outside diameter of the work. And now on the video I'm turning the piece round in the chuck so the chuck can now get a real solid grip on a clean piece of metal. I'm machining away the outer scale on the piece then I need to measure it to make sure I'm going to get it the right size. It's fairly important when making a piston that you do not cut it at this stage to the finished diameter. It needs to be a little bit bigger because the final finishing of the piston is done with the piston being mounted on the piston rod. So that if you were to take it to finished size you might find that the piston has to be machined smaller to make it concentric with the piston rod then it would be too small for the bore. Once the outer diameter is machined take a facing cut across the work. This will ensure that the face of the work is at a perfect 90 degrees to the length of the work. So when the hole is drilled in the centre of the piston and threaded for the piston rod everything will be in line. Once you've finished facing off the work using a nice slow feed to get a good finish it's time to drill the centre hole. Start off with the centre drill then change the centre drill for a tapping size twist drill. This cast iron also drills very well. It really is good stuff but don't force the drill you do not want to break the drill off in the work at this stage. As I wanted to use the original piston rod because it was fine I used a tap to correspond to the thread on the end of the piston rod. This was quarter BSF and here you see me threading the hole. Here's the original piston rod and as you can see it's not threaded all the way down. So I put the rod in the lathe and using the tailstock die holder I cut a longer thread on the part. Now it's time to part off the piston slightly longer than the finished size. Using a parting tool with cast iron is quite straightforward it cuts surprisingly well. This is a very small parting tool and a very small lathe so I did have to slow down the speed. The lathe is now running in back gear and if you listen to it you'll see that it's making a slightly different noise. Feed the parting tool into the work slowly and consistently. If it starts to chatter withdraw the tool and start again. You may have to go even slower. As this piece of work has a hole drilled down the centre don't forget that the parting tool will part off the piece before it gets to the centre of the work. And what you should end up with is a piston blank like this, slightly oversized. As I said earlier what I did was I cut the thread all the way down on this piston rod but it's a good idea to open up the hole slightly so that the piston rod sinks into the piston and gives a much better appearance. You can see it here, where the rod meets the piston there's no raggy bit of thread there. I put the piston in the chuck this way around just to check the concentricity of the piston rod and it's fine. Now it's time to check the cylinder dimensions. This cylinder is one and a half inches in diameter so the piston needs to be one and a half inches diameter also actually slightly under as we're using an o-ring. Don't forget the piston is only mounted on the piston rod in the chuck so only take fine cuts. If the tool starts chattering you're taking too heavy a cut. Once you have the piston to size take it out and try it in the bore. It should be a good fit with a little bit of clearance if you're using an o-ring. It's not a good idea to take the work out of the chuck and try it in the bore for size. I did this just for the video. 
It's much better to make a piston in a collet chuck, far more accurate. But luckily my old three jaw chuck here is quite good. And here you see me machining the groove. I'm using a parting tool with a very slow spindle speed and feeding the tool very carefully into the work. Don't forget that the piston's only supported on the piston rod. Widen the groove with the parting tool until the o-ring fits into this groove without nipping at either side. The silicon o-ring needs to have a tiny bit of float. It must not be a push fit into the groove and also it must not be a push fit into the bore. If you do this, the piston ring will flatten very quickly and become ineffective. It's worth doing a bit of reading up on o-rings, there's plenty of information online. If you get it wrong the results will be disappointing and somewhat frustrating. Here you see me doing the test fit and it's still a little tight. So just keep shaving off a tiny amount. After you've done a few of these it becomes very straightforward. But the piston ring has to be just the right fit on the piston. Take your time with this and get it right first time. Nope, it's still too tight. Try again. I'm shaving off very fine amounts of metal here. And also being very careful because it's still held just by a piston rod. I don't want the tool to dig in, that would be a disaster. You need a bit of patience on this job. Nice gentle cuts, slow movements. I'm now taking the groove to the correct depth. And when I try the piston ring in now, Mm, still a bit tight. For the purposes of the video, as I mentioned earlier, I would never take the work out of the chuck until it was completely finished. So this is not perfect, and this isn't the one I'm going to use on the engine. This is what I'm doing for the video. So please don't leave messages and comments telling me I'm doing it wrong. I do know about that. So finally, taking a finishing cut across the groove, the O-ring is a good fit. Perfect. Just sits in there, no nipping, and should give us a great piston seal. The next thing to do, before you remove the piston from the chuck, is to clean up the piston slightly with a file. Remove the sharp edges. A 90 degree angle cut on a lathe is razor sharp, and it's easily sharp enough to cut the o-ring when you're fitting it. Needless to say, make sure the file has a handle and keep your hands well cleared of the chuck. Finally, remove the piston from the chuck, oil it thoroughly with steam oil. Don't use motor oil, silicone o-rings tend to get a little bit sticky with motor oil I find, and fit it to the cylinder. It should be an easy push fit. With very little pressure in the cylinder, the piston moves very smoothly, and it's quite powerful even with low pressure. Before, there was no power at all. Most of the compressed air blew past the piston. So it's time to put the engine back together starting with the gland on the piston rod. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.